welcome to the NBC Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Flash! Ah! Stealer of the waifus. Different, different Flash, different Flash. Oh. Savior of the Griffins. Yeah, much better. But you know that Flash's pony parents just named him after Magnus. Really? I would like to think so. Hey. In fact, wouldn't that be hilarious? Flash... Flash Century meets Flash Magnus is like, oh my gosh, I was totally named for you. <laughs> oh man, like, uh, I would love to see Sentry's bloodline and where he comes from. That'll be fun. But anyway, also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. You know, considering in later episodes, and I'm going into spoiler territory, that uh, Flash, the the one that we used to know who was the waifu stealer, kind of. Uh, well, I mean, the Flash in that we're talking about right now mm -hmm. is, uh, well... The first Flash, not, not the second Flash? He's the captain of the Guard in the Crystal Empire. Oh, okay. So now I'm wondering how that went down. <laughs> also, uh, hi! <laughs> hey, no comment on Flash. Uh, I, I don't use Flash on... Ah! <laughs> I don't use Flash on my camera because it makes the picture look all brighty and whatnot but we're not talking about that flash we're talking about the other flash and not that flash too so in today's episode we are going to review the legends of magic comic issue 4 in this issue sunburst reads to starlight glimmer about the legend of flash magnus and the cloudsdale royal legion yes that's short yes so before we head into the review let's go for first impressions Silver, what do you think? Flash Magnus himself is in a weird place. He, how to describe this? He is a great example of the hero archetype. He's very much action and adventure, and you can see why he would be a legend. At the same time, we don't know him as an individual very well. And I will say that both in, in the comics and in the show... His stories are big on action, but not perhaps the deepest in character. It's just sort of funny how consistent he is in that lack of depth. So it's it's kind of funny, but this is a fun comic. It's enjoyable, and it provides... One, it's a fun comic for Starlight and Sunburst interaction, and then it's a fun comic for Flash Magnus and his team's interactions. I enjoy it very, very much, just as I've enjoyed The Legends of Magic. All right, all right. And Seppi, how about you? I don't remember much outside of Griffins being involved and Cloudsdale stuff. Also, Jerk Commander. I'll just say for the safe side, it was okay. Alrighty then. I'm gonna go back to drawing boobs. <laughs> oh god, no. Uh, no. Anyway, as for <laughs> me, my favorite, I love this comic. One of my favorites, like... This comic is just awesome. I really, really like it. Flash Magnus for his part there, like, oh my god, just awesomeness. Dancing more. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh -huh. So anywho, yeah. let's get into the review. If you have not read this yet, pause here and go read it. Did you like it? Like, I hit it? Like, it was really good. So anywho, we start off the comic with Starlight trying to break down Sunburst's door. Like, Starlight here has been saying that Yo, Sunburst, I sent you a letter a few weeks ago stating that I'll be in Canterlot visiting with Twilight. And I sent you messages saying that let's hang out for lunch or dinner. And you didn't reply, you jerk. Now I have to go up to your crappy room and what you're doing? Just reading books? Like you could do that at home. You're in Canterlot. Look at the sights and sounds and stuff. Much fun. I really feel like you, you're almost reading a Schwarzenegger voice. Yeah. Sunburst, I want to be shipped with you. <laughs> now read to me like one of your French ponies. <laughs> uh, no joke there, too. <laughs> but I was governor. I was governor of California. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, um, with that short synopsis there, start to ask, what are you doing? And and Sunburst just says, oh, um, I'm reading this book about Flash Magnus. And it's not the regular book. It's one of the books that Star Soldier Bearded wrote. And it's a side story to the main story. It's something like 
uh, the main show having its own storyline where the comic is doing its own supplemental things and it kind of ties together to the main story. It's really cool. Ooh. <laughs> and so, any Oh, no. I owe you nothing. <laughs> I so didn't hey. do any you've seen the last episode, so there. Well, you just did two. <laughs> Making it for last time, are we? I owe nothing. So anyway, Starlight just says, "Okay, uh, you since you want to read books so much, Sunburst, read me the story. I want to relax and hear you read and do the funny voices. The funny voices makes the whole story really fun." And oh my! Just read, read to me like one of your French mares. But I just love the scenario here where, oh, um, you you're going to be uh, laying down on my bed. Oh, um, uh, okay. I, I I guess I can read on the desk. Yeah, I mean, like it's, it's not like I wanted to. It's not like I wanted to um, lay down a bit too. Yeah, I mean, bro, she, oh. she's signaling you like raising the flag and whatnot like yo bro i i'm available like come on i don't think that's the case but whatever your imagination says norman oh you don't want to rely on our imaginations are horrible amoral Mm -hmm. imaginations Mm -hmm. yeah so anywho sunburst starts reading the story about flash magnus and his awesome Legends of him fighting a dragon and whatnot. But no, nah, this story is not about that. This is the story of what happened after. And what happened after is that the commander, or what is it? Was it Captain? No. Yeah, it's the captain. Uh, captain Ironhead is calling every pony available, or the Royal Legion, who is available, to gather up for an emergency. Long story short, the weather ponies derp and created a huge mess they created a tornado or storm to be exact the storm of the century probably need some cloud chasers and whatnot or storm chasers or a really bad movie called twister yeah it's the f5 finger of god <laughs> oh god <clears throat> so anywho um captain iron hoof was it iron head yes i Yep, Iron Head. Wow. Sounds like he's good at headbutting. Yep. So anyway, Captain Iron Head here asked for volunteers. Like sorry, he didn't really ask for volunteers, he just tells that okay, I need four fast ponies, so I'm gonna pick you, you, you and you, which is Nimble Dash, uh, Bella Breeze, Flash Magnus, and also uh Grimhoof. You're gonna join me to take down the Storm, while the rest of you take care of Klausdale and be the first line of defense. Anywho, adventure ho! Oh, I just felt like getting in the spirit. <laughs> so, the, Lord, the Royal Legionnaires uh, fly off to intercept the storm, and Nimble Dash sure says, like, huh, come on, old timer, it's just a storm, we got this. And Captain Ironhead says, the storm is very dangerous and very big, and with that kind of attitude, you're going to die fast. Yep. <laughs> You'll be the first to die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, I would like to call Nimble Dash Rainbow Dash's ancestor here. Makes sense. It is a fun game of Spot the Pony. Yep. Ancestor. Look at her. Her mane, her attitude is totally Rainbow Dash. <laughs> I can just imagine uh, Flash Magnus going up to her and just saying, You know, at one point, I could have been your great great granddaddy. Oh, God. Like, oh, never say that to me again. Never. No. Oh, boys. But that'd be weird because I ship them so hard. So very, very hard. I don't know about that. I, there's a lot of ships, but Rainbow Dash and Flash? Not really. Oh, I see. So you didn't watch my, my appearance on Bronies React. Well, I see how much you value our friendships. Uh, anywho. I watch it. Yeah. But anywho. As they arrive at the, well, tornado, uh, yeah, it's, it's a storm of the century. F5, F5. It's huge. So the Royal Legionnaires starts to, you know, kind of want to bust the storm. But before they could do so, they're stopped by some griffins. 
Yeah. Griffins. Yes. So I'm dating a griffin. Watch your mouth. <laughs> so Annie. Watch your mouth. So Annie. Griffins. <laughs> You're a hippogriff. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so Annie, who uh, they're stopped by Blackbeak, the Royal Griffin Defense Force. And yeah, um, this is kind of logical because the ponies can't really cross the border without the Griffin's permission, even if there's a, well, quote-unquote emergency in this scenario here. And yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, too, two eagles fighting each other. And yeah, Captain Ironhead says, yeah, you know what? You try to bust that storm by yourself and see how it goes. We, me and my crew, we're going to go there and look and laugh at you. Yeah. Um. That's how I see it. I'm I was going to say, it's like, yeah, I maybe it. you have some repressed memories you need to talk about. <laughs> no. I yeah. Saying, yeah that's, no, I sense you're projecting here. Do you, do you need to hug it out? Safi, get a ticket, fly out to Norman's place and hug him. <laughs> if you're nice. paying for it, sure, I'd do that. <laughs> Okay, bring you. No, you're the one with the coffee donations. <laughs> Actually, nobody's been donating. Oh. That's the thing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Folks, get on that so so Safi can go give Norman a hug. Yeah. Yeah. So anywho, yeah. Um, before I carry on, any guys want to say anything about this? Well, this is the start of the warrior versus the hero, which is the the hero is the immature form of the warrior. Flash Magnus is all like, "Hey, we're just gonna." duck around and and still help right and and his boss is like no they've set a limit we're going to we're going to honor that even if he is a big jerk and while that sounds cold really that's helping avoid a war in which both sides might lose even more lives true that and that's why i kind of like this part because even though that we dislike it it makes a lot of sense because at the same time to egos so, yeah, uh, it can be helped. As much as how Flash hates this, he has to follow command. And yeah, I can say much. Except for what happens next. While Captain Iron Hit and his crew sit this one out, they see the Griffin crew try to bust the clouds. And the Griffins are strong flyers. They're really strong. And yeah, they kind of bust the clouds but because of their inexperience with handling well weather and well they're kind of doing it wrong they get bullied by the storm and yeah they, they're not having a good time so yeah if i've learned anything about james and the giant peach is that storms can be bullies yep and kill your parents uh, yeah that too right those they scare little boys. <laughs> but anywho, uh, while all this is happening, um, Captain Ironhead looks at the scenario situation and says, you know what? Uh, I saw the Griffin fly in and that storm ain't getting smaller. So they fail. Told you, you jerks. Gee, uh, no, you are really projecting here. I mean... <laughs> What? <laughs> is there anything you want to share with the class? No, man. I'm just having a lot of fun. Doesn't sound I, like watch, it. Watching creatures suffer in pain and misery. Norman, <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> You're sick. No, boy, so You're sick. <laughs> oh, boy. But anywho, <clears throat> while all this is going on, Captain Iron Hit says, okay, once that storm crosses the border, it's our job to take care of it and dash just asked um so when are we going to start the job and like i mentioned before once it crossed the border which is that stream of lake there and flash noticed that hey there's a village down there we can't stand about we can't stand aside and look at that poor village get wrecked that's not right and and his boss is like you're right we can't just sit here go get some popcorn <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. But um, Iron Head just says, I don't like it as much as you do, but we have been told not to cross the border. We can't do anything about it. 
And we just have to sit here and suck our thumbs or whatever it is that we do. And Flash just says, yes, sir, full of disdain. And by the time that the villagers notice the storm, which is kind of strange because it's stupid big, it's too late for them. They can't fly away because the youngins are too weak and they're going to die. They're going to die. Made me optimistic, Norman. Jeez. Yeah. No, they're, they're, it's pretty much a given. But I like that Iron Head... Yes, I think so. It is how he's called. Well, he's not heartless, but he just says, you go down there as a representative of the Royal Legion, you start a war. You know, you invade their territory, no matter how noble the intention. Mm-hmm. He is looking at the big picture, and so I don't think he's he's cavalier or blasé or apathetic about any of this. He just knows this is what they have to do. And a person in his position has to follow that rule. Yeah, even though he doesn't, he doesn't like it, he's, he, um, his hands are tied. And uh, this is one of those scenarios where kids don't really understand why this is going on. But as adults, we do and we don't like it kind of scenario. But you got to do it. You get to do what you got to do. Yeah, because, well, if you... Do cross the line and save the griffins. You're technically crossing the border and invading their territory. And that's not right. And the griffins might take that as an act of aggression and an act of war. And uh, like this is the quote-unquote problem with politics. It's not fun. It's a lot well, of... Well, nobody said it was fun. Yeah, but that's the problem there. Hey, if you look at America right now and our politics, it's definitely not fun. Making fun of it might be fun, but that's just to keep us from crying. That's true, too. Yeah, pretty much. So, Oh, Stephen Colbert, take away the pain. <laughs> oh, boy. He's but... no longer there, though. Oh, no. He's on The Late Show. Oh, he is? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. What? I don't keep Sophie. up with television. I usually watch Comedy Central. <laughs> Your lack of prime time deeply disturbs me. I'm forced to watch the news with David here. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, Flash just says, Sir, permission to conduct a rescue for the griffin of that town. And Commander just says, No. And says that you're representing the Royal Legionnaire. If you go there, you start a war, like we mentioned before. And <laughs> this is kind of smart for uh, Flash. He says, Then I quit. I'm not a part of the Legionnaires. And even though you say that, uh, in political terms, the Griffin might see that as a negative regression from the Legionnaires and you could throw Flash under the bus and say that he's not part of the Legionnaire and blah, 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 blah. But that's besides the point. Well, I do want to point out, if he wants to say he's out, he really needs to take off the armor. Yeah, that's true too. Otherwise, to a third party... Yeah, Legionnaire just broke ranks and, and st- invaded their territory. You can't fire me, I quit. That is it, that there, yes, but the problem is, like Silver said, to the third party, doesn't count. Oh, I know. I'm still just going to make the reference anyway, just to make myself laugh. Yeah, all right, then. So, anywho, Flash just goes in, saves some hippo kids, sorry, not hippo kids, but uh, some griff kids, and yay, they, they, he... Pull them to the other side of the river. Oh, okay. And he got to go fast to save them all, but he's not fast enough. So what's going to happen? Well, because of... Well, I'm going to read this verbatim. And sometimes the greatest weapon a hero has is not their speed or strength, but their example they set for others. And that line there really, really touched me, man. Like, that's... That line there is awesome. And with that, the rest of the crew, well, did what Flash did and saved lives. And with that, the griffin of that town are saved from the storm. And, well, once the storm crosses the border, they kick some storm ass with teamwork and whatnot. Yay. 
in coordination and no one gets shocked. And meanwhile, the griffins that tried are probably lying dying on the ground somewhere off in the corner. Probably. And with that, they land to see how the griffins are doing. And they are considered heroes. And there's a small line here that says, in fact, while you may hear the story about the dragons more in Cloudsdale, I am told that if you ask about Flash Magnus in Griffinstone, you'll hear about this tale. So that there is really awesome. Like, I like this a lot. This this comic is really awesome. Well, it also shows uh, a big part of being a hero in fiction is testing yourself against an impossible task and learning your limits. Mm-hmm. Flash Flash was goes in all in, but he starts to realize that he doesn't have the speed needed. He he can't do this. He doesn't stop trying, but he's confronted with that absolute boundary. And that's where the others come in to, you know, power of teamwork and whatnot. Yep, the power of friendship. Ta-da! And yeah, that's just awesome, man. Like teamwork and stuff because you did the right thing because you just wanted to do the right thing. I, I like those kind of situations. Like, it's awesome. Much awesomeness. Anywho, after finish reading the story, uh, a few things they, they discovered was uh, because of Flash Magnus' action, it seems that the two nations began to cooperate much more. And it seems that Griffin and Pegasi attending flight school together is a thing. It's not a throwaway line, I guess, because Gilda appeared in one episode in season one, attending flight school and whatnot. Yeah, not not because of that. No, no, no. Well, actually, that, that does say something, that uh, we wouldn't have Rainbow Dash and Gilda if not for Flash Magnus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And shipping. Yeah, Gilda and Rainbow Why Dash. Why not? I dig it. So, anywho, yeah. Um, Starlight says, eh, I find that highly unlikely, but you know what? <sighs> Makes sense. And Sunburst here says, um, sometimes um, fiction comes from a bit of reality and whatnot, stuff and stuff. And I'm hungry. You want to go have lunch or dinner or whatever it is? Uh, Glim Glam here says, yes. Yeah, let's go do that. I like that. And yeah, next up will be Sambula and the Snake. Yep. <laughs> and we'll, but meanwhile, they're having dinner together. No! Oh! the shipping yeah oh the shipping get rainbow dash and flash magnus to go on a double date with them super shipping oh Uh, so anyway i'm still not giving money (laughs) you owe me about three dollars young lady nah so anyway yes uh comic ends so let's head into well any discussion and also final thoughts silver well, I, I guess there's... Here's the thing. When this comic came out, Campfire Tales had not yet aired. The, this was partly because the last season's airings may have been even more bonkers than the current season. And I mean it. It's all been bonkers lately. Hearing Flash fought the dragons, like, wait, dragon? I want it. I want to see him fight dragon. Why are we now talking about him fighting dragon? I want to see the dragons. Yeah. Dragon, dragon, rock dragon. Dragon ball. Yeah. But this... Z. Yeah. But I really enjoyed uh, this comic. I just find it funny that we now know that this is not fiction. This is biographical. And I just think to myself, so this is the actual account of how Griffins became uh, attended flight school together. So it's kind of funny that the sunburst is all like, oh, well, you know, every every fiction has a nugget of truth. Well, this is the whole dang or. This isn't just a nugget truth. This is deeply buried ore that's been compressed and turned into a diamond of clarity. But on a side note, right? Like, I do like the lore here, but the problem with this is that it's kind of a hard sell because, well, A, you don't see much Griffin in Cloudsdale, and B, the Griffin Society in Griffinstone seems to be, well, Detroit. Detroit? Well, no, there's no need to be offensive here. Was well, she singing about bananas now? What? I don't know. Okay. Hang on. Banana. Okay, I, I, I got to ask. I got to ask. Is the Detroit joke getting old now? Uh, as far as I know, it's not. It's not lost on his steam. I don't think the good people of Detroit 
are raising a fuss. All right, then. I don't know. I mean, I I hear that joke being told a lot, so I thought it was like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. So I still I still hear John Cena jokes going on. John over Cena the joke is fun. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I I do like the fiction there where because of this you get uh, ponies and griffins attending flight school and whatnot. But I think because of well, no income and whatnot, they don't send their pony. Sorry, they don't send their griffs or yeah, they send them. They don't. They don't send their griffs there anymore. But you were saying silver. Well, just that it's an enjoyable. It's a great study of the the warrior and the hero. One who is knows limits and understands the bigger picture, but every now and again the youthful idealist still wins out and finds a way. I guess the one thing is that there's no there is no consequence to any of this. Flash is not kicked out of the Royal Legion. He does not have to earn his way back or start a new legend. So in a way, it's like he took a risk, but nothing happened. Well, something did happen, and I think he saved life. Well. There, but there's no consequence. And so I think uh, I, I would have liked to have seen that. I would have liked to have seen him have to deal with the fallout, knowing you did the right thing, but that doesn't always mean that everything's going to go your way. True, but okay, I, I have to point something out here. It's a bit grim, but did you guys notice that none of Blackbeak's crew are there near the end? Like, they're gone like, totally gone. Well, I'm assuming they're in intensive care, though the darker part of me is like, oh, yeah, they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Who wants fried chicken? <laughs> Colonel Sanders has some new awesome recipes. Yeah, but, oh, man, the only reason why, okay, uh, like Silver mentioned, they're knocked out and they're probably sleeping somewhere and the villagers are not going to say anything because, hey, uh, our heroes save our life. We're going to see anything much about that, right? right? And the yeah, darker part is... <laughs> They're six feet under. <laughs> well, the nice th- the nice thing is that the impact of when they fell kind of buried them six feet anyway. So all anyone had to do was like fill in the dirt. It was very convenient. So yeah, what can we say about these idiots? Well, they completely failed at their job, and we all nearly died. So yeah, let, let's just fit it, fill in the hole and let's get to the after party. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't think that they they did a bad job. They're just doing what they need to do. Still. But they're being very paranoid. Oh, yeah. I mean, still. uh, You know what? This is getting too close to reality. Abort, abort, abort. That's what they should have said when they were going in for the fight. But anywho, but anywho. uh, Seppi, what about you? It was a thing that happened. You didn't enjoy this comic? Eh. Oh, wow. All right, then. I never said I didn't enjoy it. I just, uh, eh. I'm just going to forget about it and then move on to the next. All right. Then. No, you can't forget the shipping. Don't forget the shipping. All right. Then. And as for me, I like this comic a lot. I-, I would say this is my favorite. Like, Rock Hoof is okay, but Flash is one of my favorites now. Like, just because of that line I mentioned before where uh, sometimes, the greatness, sorry, sometimes the greatest weapon a hero has is not their speed or strength. Is, uh, but the example that they set for others. I mean, that line there is huge, ain't that right, Silver? That is a wonderful line, and yeah, I mean that there, like that, really put a smile on my face and somehow inspired me. So yeah, I mean, that's awesome. So are you like diving into tornadoes? Oh, well, now? probably if I have the wing span for it. I'm having all the wrong images right now. Is it? No, 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 don't. But yeah, I, I like this comic. Uh, it sets a pretty awesome tone. The story's awesome too. And fun fact, if you take a look see at the comic, right, the color gets more mute near the middle of the storm. And after the storm's done, the color brightens up again. Well, you know what that means. Rainbow Bright was in that storm fighting Murky. Oh, someone got lightning bliss. <laughs> Oh, God. So, anywho, yeah, I um, highly enjoyed this comic. Would recommend that you go read it. So, yeah. Oh, boys. So, anyway, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, we're going to talk about how Rainbow Dash and uh, and Flash Magnus are perfect for each other. Really, though? Oh. 
Oh, well, no, that's just what I'd like to talk about. But we never do what I want, do oh, we? Unless somebody yeah. Patreon supports that uh. thing, we, we probably could. I mean, we could talk about the ships for the ponies. I would be stunned. I would be stunned if anyone <laughs> uh, actually did that. <laughs> but let's th- let, instead, we'll have a little shindig about episodes once again. Because here we are saying, oh, I'm curious about dragons. I hear... Flash Magnus face dragons. Where are the dragons? Well, here are the dragons. Spike the dragon in the mold oh, down. God. You think uh, things couldn't go worse for Spike? Oh, no. In this episode, it's going to get worse for Spike. Well, we just had an, we just had an episode talking about how bad he was at, at romance and advice. Now we get to talk about how bad he is at puberty. <laughs> oh, God. Oh god! And oh man! In all honesty, I did. I do wish that he got the size of um, when he grew in season two. Was it when he grew because of greed? Remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. You remember that size? Like I wish he grew to that size a bit, or at least taller a bit. But no, no. Give it time. Give it time. But anywho, yeah. Next week we'll be doing the meltdown. Yay! So anywho. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the YouTubes. Just do a search for After the Fact, and you'll see my video reviews. Uh, if you go to Equestria Daily every Wednesday, you'll around noon, you will find a... Uh, editorial or comic review i should say noon but that is uh mountain time and we're fast approaching daylight savings oh it gets so confusing but it's noon somewhere and you can also find me on deviant art under mlp hyphen silver hyphen quill i will be doing uh pinkie pie says goodnight comics for before every new episode though i realize that we are fast approaching the end of the season here in america two weeks well. away Heavens. If it goes on a weekly basis, by the way. Aside from the two-part yeah, finale, it shall. But my goodness, it's hard to keep track these days. Oh, boys. Oh, by the way, Silver, did you make a McCree joke there? It's got to be high noon somewhere. <laughs> it's high noon somewhere. <laughs> you're not a JoJo. Then... You're not allowed to make a high noon joke. Oh, I can make a high noon joke. You're not Josuke. Jojo? Or not Josuke. Uh, Jotaro. You're not Jotaro. Uh, Jotaro don't got jokes, man. Have you seen that part four? His joke was terrible. Look, Safi, I know you're a fan of Pokemon, but really, we don't need to hear about the, the Jotaro <laughs> League right now. Uh, spoilers for people. Uh, not really spoilers. I don't know, but we did a Poke one Only review. Only Jotaro! Only Jotaro can make a high noon joke. Wanna know why? Because he's voiced by Matthew Mercer, who also voices McCree. Uh, Pokemon <laughs> Jotaro. Okay, okay, okay. I okay, would okay. happily accept that. Seppy, what about Pikachu's Strike a Pose? <laughs> oh, Seppy. Yare, yare. Anyways. What about you, Seppy? Where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter and all these other social media sites under Anime Christie. Also, buy me coffee. Please buy me coffee. I am a poor, starving artist who needs money. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think about how to do Bohemian Rhapsody and I forgot. <laughs> I'm I'm just an artist. Nobody loves me. She's just an artist from a poor family. That's actually... Spare her, her life from this monstrosity. That, do, 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 do. That's actually my life in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, well, we need to do the musical. God dang it. But anywho, yes. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, where you can catch this show on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. We do the Pony Reviews, the Comic Reviews, and also the Movie Reviews. Also, Kisu Kisu Reviews, and also Movie Reviews. Yay, much awesomeness. You're the worst. <laughs> I know. So, anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion Podcast, which is this show. Exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank myself, Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am a Safi who is ready to kill somebody the next time they say the words that I... You know. Uh, I know I don't because yeah, you yeah. cut out there. Well, what was it again? You kill somebody for what now? I will kill somebody for saying those certain words. And also, I didn't cut out. I just started saying nothing because I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh. Well, oh, all right. All right. So we'll, I, I guess we'll see you guys next week then. Bye. Easy come, easy go. She watches Johto. Jotaro. Yeah, yeah.